Hey, this is Catherine and Katie, and we're here to give you the 411K. Cheers. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> it's our first podcast. Uh, all right, so should we introduce ourselves? Our mission is to enable women to feel confident in their relationship with money by fostering healthy financial discussions with women, for women, through lessons learned by women, and some cool interviews with experts for good measure. We are not financial advisors. Our aim is to get the dialogue going and to take the fear and shame out of talking about typical financial stresses that women might face in their 20s, 30s, and beyond, like negotiating your salary, tackling student loans and other debt, saving for retirement, moving in with your partner, investing, planning a wedding, divorce, emergency funds, and everything in between. If it involves money, no topic is off limits. So, pour yourself a glass of your favorite drink and join us. But first, let's start by learning a little about the case. I'm Katie, and this is Catherine, and we're going to ask each other four and 11 questions so that you can get to know us a little bit better. Go for it. Okay, age? 27. How many jobs have you had? I'm talking like all jobs. Mm -hmm. Eight. I've had eight jobs since I was 16. Star sign? Scorpio. (laughs) (laughs) Do you believe in separate or joint bank accounts for couples? I am a huge advocate right now as an engaged person to have separate bank accounts, but I feel like that will probably change once we start like having a family together. What's your day job? I am a compliance officer at a financial firm that does real estate investments in Boston. Do you still have any student loans? Great question. I am actively getting more student loans as I'm a part-time student at Boston College. So um, I actually, as of today, took on another $7,000 in student loans for the semester. Exciting. Very exciting. Is any debt good debt? Yes. There is such thing as good debt, in my opinion. So like mortgages, student loans, those are good debt, I think. Credit cards, bad debt, two thumbs down. I think I do think our country as a Western country is very comfortable with debt. And a lot of very intelligent, well-informed people get themselves in over their head at very early stages in their education, their working lives, their family lives that they have been told is good and it's not. It can have some pretty wide reaching ramifications. What do you wish someone told you about money when you got your first job? If there was one piece of advice, it would be to to learn the value of saving. That's good. Have you ever paid a fee for a late credit card payment? I have not. I have not paid a single credit card bill late. But I've also only had credit cards since graduating college. So I've only had credit cards for five years. I'm not sure if I wish I had a credit card in college. I'm kind of grateful for it. It's probably a good thing. What podcasts are you listening to right now? I'm listening to Her Money and My Favorite Murder. What is the stupidest thing you ever bought that you couldn't afford? Stupidest thing I ever spent money on that I couldn't afford. I bought a moped when I was 18. Shut up. And I could not afford it. And I remember I was short and I asked my grandparents if that would be my graduation present from high school. Did they give it to you? They gave me some. (gasps) I bought a pink moped. Did they know they were giving it to you for yep. that purpose? I told them oh, that those I Those are had, some cool grandparents. They're really cool grandparents. I had told them that I had saved all of my money and I wanted to buy a moped. And then my parents said that I also needed to buy the safety course. Very smart parents. And I had a moped for four summers. I was just going to ask you, where's the moped now? The moped is gone. What's your highest outgoing expense? Rent. Red or white? Red. Okay, what do you treat yourself with? What's your guilty pleasure? Absolutely food. I am such a foodie. What is the best investment you ever made? I would say my best investment, which might not be considered an investment, would be all the money I spent studying abroad. Mm -hmm. Because I think it made me more worldly. 
It helped me get my first job and it still is a great conversation starter. You know, I love international experience, so you don't have to convince me. I know. Sounds like a great investment. All right. Do you want yours? Relationship status? (laughs) Married. And it's not complicated. (laughs) That's perfect. Um, Combined accounts? Definitely. Children? Two. Preferred wine? Red, white, or bubbly? I'm going to go with bubbles. I love bubbles. Where does most of your money go? (sighs) Daycare. In fact, more than the mortgage. Okay. What are you saving for right now? Retirement. Great answer. (laughs) What is your favorite splurge item? My favorite splurge item would have to be travel. Although sometimes that feels like a necessity because my husband's family lives out of the country. What is your biggest personal financial regret or fear? Ooh. Okay. My biggest personal financial regret is attending a private college when I didn't really have a plan for me or my family who helped me with some of the costs pay for it. I think I I purchased above my kind of buying power above your above <laughs> my means for college. Not that I regret it. I love where I went to college and I'm very grateful. But if I were to do that again, I I probably would do it differently. And my biggest money fear is not having a comfortable retirement, having a mortgage hang over me for 30 years. Like being a slave to my mortgage is a big fear. No, that's a really good one. What is your biggest personal financial accomplishment? I paid off $40,000 in student loans, I think a month before my first child was born. So that's I was 30. amazing. I was 30 and I paid maybe 31. I can't remember exactly what the month was, but that's really good. Yeah, that was, that was huge. What was your first job? I worked under the table. I wasn't even legal. I was 15 years old (laughs) and I worked in a restaurant. I come from a big culinary restaurant kind of family and culture. And I worked in a restaurant bussing tables. One of the wait staff quit and they made me a server. A job, which I was very (laughs) ill prepared for. It was like a breakfast place. So I was able to skate by. There were only so many combinations of eggs you could have, but that was my first job. Wow. Bussing and. What was your first adult purchase? (sighs) This sounds so silly because I know I had made other purchases. This really like shining moment of going to John Lewis, which was a department store in London during my first job after like saving for three months and really I didn't have like two pennies to rub together. And I really liked this pair of shoes that I thought about and really looked at repeatedly. And they were from Dune. I don't know if you know that. They're not (laughs) even like that expensive. No, but still. Like wasn't when you have no money, you have no money. Everything's expensive. And I bought this really funky pair of like white patent leather block heel with like a brown kind of like elastic strap across the front. They were really funky, like so London and edgy. And I just like powerful, empowered woman. It was your power shoe. It was my power shoe. I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. That was like my, my, yeah, (laughs) like a really like defining moment of adulthood for me. I don't know why. No, I was paying rent, but what would you do if you won the lottery today? I'm saying you won the big lotto, the big lotto, like the US wide. Yeah. I'd pay off my mortgage. I would pay my parents back for college for what they helped pay for college, set up a team of lawyers to, and wealth managers to manage that money. And I think I would work like three days a week at my day job. And do more fun projects on the side like that. What was the last purchase you made? So depressing, Katie, that you're asking me today. Diapers. Not for myself. (laughs) (laughs) What is the best financial tip or advice that you ever received? It's more philosophy, but I remember I studied psychology in college and I remember learning about, I don't remember the official term, but how people are always looking for the next best thing. And you really have to go against human nature to kind of remain happy with what you have. And in a financial sense, the best advice or and or philosophy that I've tried to follow is living below your means so that you can live really well later on. Like fighting the urge to always increase the quality or the level of your quality of living with every paycheck or pay increase or bonus. 
What is your favorite saving strategy? Ooh, something I think enough people don't put enough emphasis on is the emergency fund, but the emergency fund has granted me so much kind of financial security, feeling of safety that I think that's one of the best, if you could call it kind of savings that my husband and I have set up for ourselves, for our family. And then I think I'm going to quote Dave Ramsey here and I'm probably going to do it wrong, but I really like his mantra when it comes to money of knowing how to save how to spend, how to share and give, and how to invest, right? Like, I think I think I look at all four of those things equally. So the balance of yeah. all four of those. Yeah. I think you can't save without also spending a little bit. And, right. You know, sharing, whether it be with a charity or with, you know, people in need or friends and family who might need it. Can't be 100% save. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think saving without depriving yourself and having an emergency fund are really, really good tenants to live by. You've been listening to the 411K. Tune in for more podcasts and follow us on Instagram at the underscore 411K. Cheers.